Over the past 10 months or so, you've probably seen lots of news stories discussing how the 2020 lockdowns might be helping the good citizens of this planet's globalised human society, in other words, you and me, to learn how to rein in our consumption and live more within our means. We've certainly seen a massive reduction in aviation, and at least at the start of the pandemic, the air suddenly became devoid of pollution from traffic and factories too, allowing cities around the world to see the sky properly for the first time in decades. But as the enforced isolations and levels of homeworking have increased, so people in the wealthier nations have enthusiastically embraced online shopping for their everyday needs. An increase in online shopping inevitably means an increase in the number of home deliveries. And it also drives the ever-expanding global freight industry, which brings me to the International Energy Agency. They reckon that one of the climate blind spots for global policymakers in recent years has been road freight vehicles. Their environmental impact is pretty scary and they haven't always been subject to the same rigorous emissions regulations as domestic vehicles. Now though, it does look like at long last auto manufacturers and policymakers are waking up to the urgent need for emissions reductions in commercial vehicles and alternative technologies are rapidly appearing on the horizon to speed up the transition. But there's a whole host of logistical challenges standing in the way of progress too. So as we race towards 2030 and beyond, what does the future of trucking look like? Go on then, roll your fancy new titles. Hello and welcome to Just Have a Think. According to the statistics research website Our World in Data, just under 30% of all transport emissions in 2018 came from road freight. Road freight vehicles consume more than 17 million barrels of oil every day, which equates to nearly 3 billion tonnes of carbon dioxide every year. The International Energy Agency projects that unless we get significant policy changes from our governments, that 17 million barrels of oil currently consumed every day will have increased to 22 million barrels by 2050. And that's not a great contribution to a net zero carbon future. So the race is on to find sustainable and economic ways to decarbonise the global fleet of trucks. The IEA suggests that in the very short term, that means vehicle efficiency standards combined with improvements in logistics and operations. The United States Environmental Protection Agency introduced its flagship Smartway program way back in 2004, combining minimum thresholds for road freight vehicle efficiency performance with technological and operational best practice. As a result of that leadership, more than 30 other countries established green freight programs of their own or joined regional or global initiatives. In 2018, India introduced tougher fuel economy standards for all new trucks and buses sold in that country. In 2019, the European Union introduced their Vehicle Energy Consumption Calculation Tool, or VECTO, and passed laws requiring all new trucks weighing more than 7.5 tonnes to report their fuel consumption and CO2 emissions which are measured in grams of carbon dioxide per tonne kilometre. The target is a reduction of average CO2 emissions in this sector of 15% by 2025 and 30% by 2030. China has introduced what they call phase three standards, raising the fuel efficiency of all new buses and trucks sold there. And several other countries, including Japan, Argentina, Brazil, Mexico and South Korea, have all put in place their own efficiency policies. And those policies aren't just targeting engine emissions. Canadian and US second phase greenhouse gas emission standards are the first in the world to apply CO2 standards to truck bodies and trailers. Those high wide boxes produce air turbulence at the rear of the vehicle that act a bit like a braking parachute and as the truck accelerates that air resistance increases exponentially. Not much can be done about the shape of the trailers of course because they have to be optimised for the amount of product that can be fitted into them. But innovative products like this one from German manufacturer Betterflow can significantly reduce that drag factor. It's a fully automatic rear wing system that opens up once the truck hits 60 kilometers an hour without the driver having to do anything. Doesn't look like much, does it? But it improves the aerodynamic properties of the trailer and reduces the drag coefficient by almost 10%. Fuel efficiency and emissions regulations are obviously a big step forward, but ultimately, there's only so much you can do with an internal combustion engine, isn't there? You can move from diesel to alternatives like biofuels, derived from crops like corn or sugarcane, of course. These have long been touted as a carbon neutral solution, because in theory, 
you're only emitting the CO2 that the plant itself removed from the atmosphere during photosynthesis. But when a full analysis is carried out, those claims can look pretty shaky. Recent studies have found that the process of producing biofuels can generate more carbon dioxide than the fuels themselves. A 2016 report suggested that biodiesel from palm oil produces three times the emissions of fossil fuels, and oil produced from soybeans produces twice as much. And that's not to mention the catastrophic loss of ecosystems and biodiversity that happens when huge tracts of natural habitat are ripped up to be replaced by monocrop plantations. LPG and natural gas have been hailed as having lower carbon content than petrol or diesel, but even that suggestion can be questioned. The International Energy Agency point out that when potential emissions leakages and lower efficiencies are factored in, the overall net benefit, something the industry refers to as well-to-wheel emissions reductions, varies from 15% at best to no net benefit at all, depending on engine efficiency. So is there any light at the end of the tunnel? Well, at this stage, I know there'll be a lot of people out there yelling that the real answer is to slash our unsustainable level of global consumption, stop shipping luxury food items and useless trinkets halfway around the world, and choose locally manufactured products and foods wherever possible. And if you are yelling that at the screen, then you are, of course, quite right. The trouble is there are several billion other people on the planet who haven't quite reached your level of enlightenment yet, and they are still going to demand the stuff they want when they want it. So given that heavy duty vehicles are likely to be a permanent fixture on our roads in the coming decades, a logical first step would seem to be getting rid of their internal combustion engines altogether and replacing them with motors powered by electric batteries or hydrogen fuel cells. And at this stage, I know there'll be a lot of people out there yelling that electric vehicles are no better if they're being charged off of a grid powered by coal and most hydrogen is produced by steam reforming methane, which comes from fossil fuels and produces a bunch of carbon dioxide in the process. I know, and that's precisely why many people argue that we need to continue accelerating the integration of renewable power and energy storage onto our national grids, and why we need to aggressively pursue and develop green hydrogen produced by electrolysis of water with zero CO2 emissions. Both these things are already happening in many parts of the world, including the big players like the US, the EU, Australia, China, and India. In the US, 15 states plus the District of Columbia have committed to accelerate the adoption of California's zero emissions vehicle program. Some of those states are already promoting zero emission buses and trucks using settlement funds from the Volkswagen Dieselgate prosecution. In Europe, the EU has adopted a super credit system that rewards manufacturers of zero and low emission trucks and buses, but it's China, once again, who are leading the way. According to the IEA, China accounts for 65% of the global fleet of electric light commercial vehicles, with nearly 250,000 on its roads. They've also got about 6,000 battery electric trucks for garbage collection and other municipal operations. And they're at the forefront of hydrogen technology too, with a fleet of about 1,800 hydrogen fuel cell light commercial vehicles and more than 4,000 hydrogen powered buses. South Korea and Japan also have ambitious plans to use hydrogen fuel cell technology in heavy duty vehicles. In July 2020, South Korea's best known automaker Hyundai became the world's first exporter of hydrogen powered trucks, shipping 10 vehicles to Switzerland. The plan is to send another 40 by the end of the year and a total of 1,600 by 2025. Over in Arizona, Nikola Motors are developing a hydrogen powered heavy duty truck. And despite allegations of fraud from an investor who has a short position on Nikola's shares and a slightly embarrassing revelation about their latest PR video, transport journalist James Morris makes the point in this September 2020 article for Forbes that he's spoken to employees and he can confirm there is a real operation there with real engineers designing and building real vehicles. And the German electronics giant Bosch are working with Nikola to provide the fuel cells and motors and they're not a company known for their rash investment decisions. According to Nikola, these trucks will have a 1,000 horsepower peak output and a range of almost 700 miles. Toyota are working on electric trucks in the States, Tata are doing the same in India, and over in Europe in October 2019, Daimler Trucks, the world's largest truck maker, announced they were abandoning development of natural gas powered trucks and committing to sell only zero emission vehicles by 2039. Better still, Volvo and Renault already started producing electric trucks in 2019, and Scania 
are operating a pilot scheme with two 27-tonne electric city delivery trucks in Norway. And then of course there's arguably the best known heavy duty vehicle of them all, the battery electric Tesla Semi, with a claimed fully laden 0 to 60 time of 20 seconds, a range of at least 500 miles, a battery life stretching to 1 million miles, and energy costs half those of a diesel unit. Tesla reckon their vehicle has a two year payback time and a lifetime fuel cost saving of around $200,000. The trucks will be produced at Tesla's Gigafactory in Nevada, with first deliveries planned for 2021. And in this modern age of e-commerce, these zero emissions trucks have a ready-made customer base of very large companies, all eager to do their bit for the climate, and of course hoover up the attractive fuel cost savings along the way. Package delivery companies like Amazon, DHL, DB Schenker, FedEx, UPS, and even the IKEA Group have all pledged to expand their electric fleets through retrofits or outright purchases in the near future. A recent webinar convened in Luxembourg brought together industry leaders from the European Pentalateral region, which is the Benelux countries, plus France, Germany, Switzerland and Austria, specifically to discuss the future of heavy duty vehicles in that part of the world. They focused heavily on the infrastructure that will be needed to support the mass adoption of electric trucks over the coming decade. One of the systems under consideration in Europe is a network of electric road systems where trucks are fitted with a pantograph on their roof that can hook onto an electricity cable suspended by catenary wires above the highway. It's essentially the same way that trams work in many city centres, but this system would be rolled out on all major trunk roads. The vehicles would also have their own onboard battery power, which they'd use as soon as they leave the highway to do the last stretch of the route. Energy efficiency analysis was carried out by Siemens in 2018 and it found that these electric road systems came out top of the pile with a well to wheel efficiency of 77%, a range of 60 kilometers per 100 kilowatt hours and a cost of just 19 euro cents per kilometer. That league table may change though as the cost of lithium ion batteries continues to fall while performance and efficiency continue to increase. Heavy duty electric vehicles will generally be charged overnight at their depots, which means they can use fairly standard chargers running at something like 50 or perhaps 100 kilowatts. But there will be a need for a charging network across countries and continents to accommodate very long distance routes. Truck drivers are legally required to make regular stops of between 45 minutes and three hours though. So a network of charging points at all those regular stopping points would be an ideal solution just needs the right capital investment from government and commerce. The Swiss Swedish automotive technology group ABB are developing a megawatt charging system or MCS to provide ultra high power, ultra rapid on road charging for this new breed of heavy duty vehicles. They're planning a pilot system for 2021 that will have one megawatt capacity charging at a thousand amps. And by 2022, they reckon they'll have a three megawatt system at 3000 amps with liquid cooled cables, connectors and inlets. But won't this massive increase in electric truck charging bring yet more pressure to bear on the electricity grid? Well, companies like ABB and others have unsurprisingly given quite a lot of thought to that question too. What they found is that if we were simply to rely on the current grid to supply these eye-watering voltages and currents, then they would certainly require pretty major upgrades with megavolt switch gear and much larger final leg transformers. But yet again, Here's where energy storage comes into play. If large scale energy storage and load management systems are installed at the charging points, then the need for root and branch conversion of the grid would be vastly reduced. And because these trucks will essentially represent a fleet of mobile batteries that will dwarf the scale of stationary batteries, they could be fitted with vehicle to grid software technology so they can be fully integrated with electricity grids, providing frequency regulation to support grid stability. This new generation of zero emission heavy duty vehicles looks set to have a revolutionary and hugely disruptive impact on the road freight industry. The cost of implementing new infrastructure will be pretty enormous, but so will be the investment opportunities for the commercial enterprises who choose to take the plunge into this brave new world. And building out and maintaining that new infrastructure will mean long term job security for millions of people all over the world. Most importantly though, we need to stop burning fossil fuels and bring our carbon dioxide emissions right down as close to zero as possible 
within only a very few short years if we're to maintain any chance at all of keeping global atmospheric warming below two degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. And road freight is certainly a sector that looks like it can play its part in that transition. Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. But that's it for this week. A big thank you as ever to our amazing supporters over at Patreon who keep the channel running. And a special shout out to the folks who've joined Patreon since last time with pledges of $10 or more a month. They are Richard Lucas, Kieran Hayes, Peter Stevenson, Yaxiel, Charles Zeller, Sebastian Makucha, James Hudson, Colin Farrelly and Michael Merrimer. You can get involved in Patreon too by visiting www.patreon.com forward slash just have a think. Don't forget to check out the Just Have a Think app as well if you haven't already had a look at it. It brings you daily news and articles about the climate and sustainable technology matters and it's a quick way to access all the videos on this channel direct from your home screen. And of course the simplest way to show your support for the channel absolutely for free is by subscribing and hitting that like button which you can do very easily by clicking down there or on that icon there. As always, thanks very much for watching. Have a great week and remember to just have a think. See you next week.